Hi everyone, it's Denise with one of our crafts. This is take two of this video. Um, I had already done a video making this. Um, it's a Gayla Gustinelli uh, inspired ephemera folio. And I got the video, <laughs> I paused it a couple times and I don't know what happened. I guess it paused and then it just deleted the video or something. And then I only had like the middle part where I was putting the signatures in. So, yeah. So I am going to make another one on camera, I guess. But this is essentially what it's going to look like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, been one of those days. So <laughs> I hope everyone's doing all right. Um, had a fairly decent day, got to go um, back on base and try and do some more shopping, and yeah, still can't find flour eggs. I live two miles from an egg farm, literally, from one of the Tyson's um, hatcheries, and um, yeah, and it's and across the street, it's got like a chicken farm, so, no, but no eggs. Can't quite figure that one out, but okay. Managed to find some yeast, <laughs> but and no milk because I, my I got milk for my son. He drinks ordinary milk, but I cannot. I'm lactose intolerant, so I've got to have um, lactose free and skim milk. You know the zero fat milk. I it still has the lactose in it, so I still can't drink it. It's it gets pretty bad. So, but that's okay. We'll make do. Right. So anyway, back to the folio. Um, like I said, this is Gale inspired. Um, what I did was I, I went ahead and did one half of this. Um, this particular sheet of paper, these two, I because I'm using a paper pad I got from Tuesday morning, um, it only has six individual double-sided sheets, so they're all different. Um, I wanted my outer... Uh, cover to be the same. So what I did was I used that DCWV's, uh, it's called Country Floral, um, and it's got, um, like, I think it's like two of each kind in here. So it's a pretty nice paper pad, um, but it's double-sided, and that's what I want to use on this. You can use single-sided if you want, and then, like, glue some decorative uh, pages in there. Uh, you could use a full sheet of colored cardstock, but you're going to need co cardstock for this project. So, um, like I said, I already did one half of the outer folio. So you'll need, if you're going to do it to where yours match, you need two matching 12 by 12 sheets and then six uh, 12 by 12 um, cardstock pieces. Um, for your signatures because we're going to do a two signature insert with three pieces each and then you're going to need six pieces of vellum or tracing paper either one will work um, and then um, you're going to also need you don't have to do it but um, you can use uh, two pieces of fabric that are um, at least nine inches in height they can be, um, the spine is going to be a one and a half inch spine. So you'll need a piece of either cardstock or a piece of file folder that is uh, nine by um, one and a half inches. Um, and then cut your fabrics or tear your fabrics. So you got nine inches. Mine are just about, they're a little uh, under three inches. Um, but just so I have, so it covers the spine on both sides, inside and out, and then has an area to attach to the outer folio pages. So let's get started. So first of all, you know, cut your piece for your spine. Like I said, it needs to be one and a half by nine. I've already had, I already had a piece already cut out. So there's that. And then what we're going to do is make another one of these which is, this is my outer portion, okay, and then, so now I need to make my inner, and I just did one of them, so to save time, um, 
on the video. So you're going to need your uh, cutter and a scoreboard or cut and scoreboard. <laughs> Either one. Oh, Lord. So what you need to do is find the upper, you know, the right way to the um, paper. So like I know that this is this is the top and this is the bottom because this has got uh, writing on it. So what I want to do is, so this is my top, this is my bottom. I need to cut this. It needs to be uh, 12 long by 11 and a half wide. So I need to take half an inch off of here. So it'll be 12 in length and 11 and a half wide. So I hope everyone is doing all right and, um, you know, not having any issues or anything in their areas. I know it's kind of getting a little crazy out there. I know that. Um, our Walmart is just plumb out of everything. Uh, unless you want to buy a vacuum cleaner or an electronic or movies or furniture. <laughs> Other than that, you're just out of luck right now. So, Okay, so what I need to do is um, score this. So I am going to score it at, I'm going to put this back down and I'm going to score at five and three quarters, which is going to be right in the middle for 11 and a half inches. Okay. So I need it to be five and there's one half and three quarter. Okay. Is that right? Two, three, four, three quarter. Is that right? Okay. Hold on. So five and a half is 11 and then I've got half an inch. Yeah. Five and three quarters. So I just want to make sure I do this right, right down there. Okay. And then we need to make our pocket portion. So, um, we want our page to be nine inches. And since this is 12, we're going to mark, we're going to turn it just a quarter turn and at the bottom of the page, that's where you want to score so that your bottom is over here on the score portion, um, three inches up. So your pocket will be three inches. I'm probably doing this on, I know I'm doing this on the wrong side. Dang it. I did. I put it on, I scored it on the wrong side. That's my bad. Okay. So. I'm a goofball. What can I say? I got up early this morning, like I said, and went and did that, and then, uh, yeah. Okay. All right, and then what I'm going to do is, let's see, fold it up. I'm going to take my scissors. And I'm going to cut right up this center portion, right on that fold, right up to that score line, so that I've got two pockets. So to keep this from from um, bowing in or folding over, I'm going to take a small smidgen and just kind of do a little curve there and cut, maybe cut all the way down, and same thing here. You can do both sides if you want, uh, curving them, I'm not, I'm just going to curve the inside portion, all right, so that when I close it, it now closes nice and flat, all right. Because otherwise, this, your edge will catch and it, it's going to be all wickety wonkety. <laughs> all right, so. Just a little bit. 
Okay, so now I have my two pieces, and as you can see, this piece on that pad, the inside is different, but I'm okay. I just wanted my outer pieces to be the same. So you can, I can choose to have that in the front, that in the back, whatever I want. So, okay. So now we need to make a spine. So I think I want this piece. Those things are. I want this piece in the front and this piece in the back. So, I'm going to take a piece of my fabric, All right. and I'm going to take art glitter glue. You can use whatever glue you like. I want the art glitter glue so I don't get the gluey daubs, you know, big thick glue globs that dry up. Um, if you put a good, nice, thin coat of the Fabri-Tac, sometimes you won't get that. But because I'm doing a big, long piece, chances are I probably will. So I'm going to use that. Or you can use, like, tacky glue or whatever. And then just try and evenly place that spine across on top of the fabric. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you kind of want to try and get it into the center as much as possible, right? So now, this is going to be my front. So, I'm going to take an about half an inch from that edge and just put some glue on there. And then I do want a small gap on here, about an eighth, oh, I'd say about an eighth of an inch in there. So that when you fold it, it's not going to bunch all up. And you'll have room for a little bit of an expansion if you need it. Okay. All right, and do not glue your flaps down on this yet because we got to put the in, inner portion of the spine on here as well. So let's see. Let's just run a small little bead out here where we need to. All right. There we go. And that part is done. And now I need to put my other side on. Same thing. About a half an inch. Now if you decide to do um, only like a quarter of an inch past, so you do uh, a two inch piece of fabric, just make sure that you only come in about half an inch from, or a quarter of an inch, I'm sorry, from this edge. here about an eighth of an inch and then I'm just gonna put my tip here on the edge and just run a bead in there just to make sure it comes out as far as I need it to. It doesn't have to come all the way to the edge, but all right. So now I want to go ahead and put this piece in here. So you can just decorate with a piece of um, paper or whatever you want. I am going to cut this down just a little bit here. I don't want it too, too much on my edge. I don't need it hanging over that much on here. So, because I don't want to put too much thickness into my pocket there. So, but you certainly can if you want. I just don't want to. 
Just glue it on here. Yeah, I was a little bummed because I did this video earlier today, like I said, and I got this done and I was all happy. And I came up here a little bit ago to start editing so I could schedule it, you know, to air tomorrow, which will be today that you guys see it Monday. Um, yeah. No. I said, uh-uh. You only get 10 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, crazy. Alright. So. Uh, let me just add my glue where I need it. I don't need a whole lot there to keep it tacked there because all you're really doing is tacking it down. I was all proud of myself because I thought, oh, I got it all done in like less than an hour. And of course, I, I did pause it a couple times to do some of the things so they weren't so repetitive. But okay. Now, got my spine done. Now I can close up my pockets. So I'm just going to put a bead there. Bead there. And this is, it does fall out quite a bit, so I apologize if some of this is going to hang off to the edge of the frame from time to time. Okay, so now we have pockets, all right. Now, what I want to do is, I've already made a template. Um, what I did was I just took a piece of paper, scrap paper, nine inches, uh, folded it in half. It doesn't matter how long. It could be an inch if you want it to be. That's totally up to you. And then I folded it in half. And then I came up and I just did a small little tack there. And then brought this down to that tack mark and then folded it. And did the same thing on the other side for my three-hole pamphlet stitch. What I want to do is go ahead and mark where I am going to... Um, put my signatures. So grab a pencil and just mark it. Um, let's see. So in here, I've got an inch and a half. There. So about, I want it at the half, half inch mark and then at the uh, inch, um, sorry, the inch mark. So then that gives Should give half an inch in between each there since it's an inch and a half because so, you remember you got your little gap over here so you don't have to find your where your spine is at there come on and then one and then I'm just going to lightly mark down the page. And there you won't see the mark if you don't, you know, if you just do a light mark, you won't see it and your signature will go right through it. So I can't even see that one. I marked it so light. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see. I can see it, so I know where to mark it. So now what I'm going to do is line this up to the top and bottom, nine inch on the top of my spine here. Okay. And then where my the line is, and then I'm 
just going to mark my three little holes or that I marked here on the paper up against it. And the same thing here. then that is marked and ready to go you can poke your holes now if you want which i think i'm gonna do real quick where did that come out oh, there's my top number so grab my arm i'm just gonna go ahead and poke my holes in now All right, so that's our cover. It's all ready to go. Now what I need to do is cut down my papers that are, I'm actually, these are my folio or my ephemera pages. Okay, so I think I can do like two at a time on this. So I'm gonna show you how to do one and then I'll probably pause to do the other so then just to save on some time. But what you need to do is cut this um, 11. So it's going to be 11 wide by 9 uh, tall. So, um, so make sure your pages are all up and down the way you want them to be. Okay. So 11, one thing about the scoreboard is you got to make sure everything's okay. 11 by 9. So it's going to be 11 wide, 9 high. And you're going to do that with all six of your cardstock pieces. Now you could take um, some plain card stock and do it that way. You could make this folio a little shorter if you want to be able to use an 11 and a half by 8 and a half. Um, you could cut it down if you certainly want to and feel free to do so. So what I'm going to do is I want that on the outside. And this is an inside page because this is where my things, uh, my my pockets are going to be. And I want I don't want that shininess on the outside. So I'm going to now mark this right in the middle, which is five and a half. And I'm going to go slow with this one because that for some reason on this they made the five and a half right next to the fold on this um folio so it's like really <laughs> i keep sometimes if i go too fast it my uh bone folder or my little uh, yeah the little folder or the bone piece whatever plastic piece goes crazy okay so this on an outer page. Okay, so five and a half. show you one more time. I think we can do that. Okay, so 11 wide. And 
and then nine. Hi. Shiny stuff on the outside. Have the five and a half. So marking it at the five and a half and folding it over. Okay. And then there is page, the third page. So that's one signature. And then I want my shiny on the outside. And you don't have to have the shiny on the outside. I just, that's what I prefer. And that. We'll do the last two, right? Okay. What the hey? You guys craft along, right? <laughs> well, I hope everybody's getting some crafting done and some organizing that they've been wanting to do for a while. Right and nine high. So and our nine mark. Right. And let's see. This is let's put that on the outer. Do I want that? No, I want to go this way. I think. Probably doing it backwards, but I'm sure you guys will let me know if I am. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it goes like that, though. Somehow cut that cricket. I don't know how, but I did. So I'm going to straighten that out just a bit. All right. That is an outer. that on the outside too. I like the colors in this though I do. Oh okay. It's the plaid on the other side that I'm feeling that it feels like. Why does that feel funny on the other side? Dur. Derpy dur. Somehow I cut that cricket. Those two sheets. I don't know. I don't know, Denise. What you doing? What you doing? Being silly. Okay. So let's see what do we got here. Because I don't want all pink in there. Let's put this one and then I kind of like the pink for the outer cover like that so that's one signature some pretty flowers there we go actually we could probably go like that there we go 
so. All right, so we've got all that cut. And then what we want to do is cut our vellum. Now I've already cut, you need six sheets of vellum and I've already cut three of them down. Um, I'm doing mine a little bit different than Gail's. It's cut almost the same way, but I'm using it differently. Um, she cut hers five and a half, and then you cut these two down as bigger pockets. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to do it, and you'll still have some leftover vellum um, that you can use in other projects. So what I did was cut at five and a quarter. And that, what that does is by not cutting at five and a half, it gives me space on either side to put the pocket so that when I um, close it, it's not going to catch. Um, and I'm doing three pieces at a time. Like I said, I've already done it. So I'm going to cut this at six. So I'm going to turn it over and cut it at six. All right. And then there's... And then again at three. So I'm going to have six of these three inch pockets. So I'm going to have three inch pockets, a two and a half inch pocket, and then I'm going to use the longer strips to make one and a half inch pockets. Okay. And then from here, you can make your finger holes if you want. It's totally up to you. Take these three. Now this should be five inches. And I am going to cut it down to two and a half. So now I have two and a half inch pockets. Okay. And then this long strip, I am going to cut down to, I'm going to take one and a half inch off of it to make a one and a half inch pocket. And then this I can use spare for whatever I need. If I need additional pockets or slits or whatever, I will have it for that. Okay, so I'll get that up. And then take this long strip and cut it at five and a quarter uh, no five and I want to cut this one at five and three eighths sorry five and three eighths All right and where's this five and a half trying to remember sorry Yeah, five and a quarter, sorry. Five and a quarter. Right. And then this half again, because you're going to have a little bit longer length. And three and a quarter. You just cut that edge off. And then if you want to make your finger holes, you can do that. So let me go ahead and I'm going to show you how to do it on one set. And then I'm going to pause and get the rest of them done. So, <coughs> sorry. I don't finger, uh, I don't put a finger hole in the smaller ones because they're, they're pretty thin. But on these three and two and a half inch ones, I will. Okay, and then what I do is take about half of them. Well, you can do it all. Do all of them. Do just a small little boop, pinch there to mark it, the halfway mark. And depending on how well your little circle punch cuts, mine will do about three and not have an issue. Punch it in the center, and then you have a little thumb 
something. So let me get these done and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got all three of my sizes. Now what you need to do is glue them onto the pages. So let's go ahead and start with this one. I'll do one signature and show you guys how it's how I do it. And then I'll pause to do the remainder for the sake of time. <laughs> Isn't things getting crazy out there? I don't know. Um, both Kansas City and um, St. Louis are have been done the 30-day mandate. So <laughs> it's like, okay. All right, so I'm going to try and put it as close to that edge. I'm not doing it right even with the edge. There's about an eighth of an inch on that side. Um, that way, when I close it, I've got still have a gap here. So if this gets thick, it's not going to bog down where I need to close my signature, the fold of the signature. I'm just going to do these three edges here. Same thing on the other side. Take it almost to the edge, but not quite. All right. And then I'm going to take my next size up. And I'm going to place it, oh, about anywhere from half to three quarters of an inch. Um, with a three, two and a half, and a one and a half. That gives me, what, three, four, five seven inches on a nine inch so that gives me two inch space so anywhere between half and three quarters of an inch up is where i'm going to place my next um piece here and as you can see these ones are are a little longer and because they're not as big of a pocket, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Okay. So, because you're not going to fit as much in those pockets as you will the bigger ones at the bottom. And then these ones are intended just for smaller bits. You know, you might have, you may never use them. If you don't think you will, you can always put two, three inch pockets there if you want and then I'm um, same thing about half to three quarters of an inch because I want to leave some space up here um, for anything that you know can go down into it because I don't want to put it way up here and everything's hanging out the top so pretty simple it's not not hard at all it is a little time consuming but <laughs> have a little frustrating when you do one video and then have to turn around and do another <laughs> yeah. okay so there's what it's going to essentially look like there's my inner page get my next one alright and if you cut uh, using that method um, on all six, you'll have just enough to do all of your pockets. And of course, you'll have that extra long strip. You can, you know, if you prefer to do it how Gail cuts hers, um, that's fine too. Um, I found that when I did mine originally, I had way too many extra pieces. So um, that were. Um, that I didn't need so this way if I have long strips I can I can make a collage with it and put a little piece of vellum on there or something for a writing space or something over the top of a pretty decoration or something somewhere and you know you can still write over it whatever that's my way of thinking <laughs> it's not going to go to waste I'll do something with it. Okay, like 
I said, about half to three quarters of an inch there. And if you do, you can do it up one side and then I just try to use the same side as a guide so they're somewhat even, although they're going to be, you know, on a different, uh, they're not going to be exact across from each other. So, and the back sides won't have anything. You're, you're certainly, you can certainly fill all four sides with ephemera if you run out of space and want need to add more in there into your ephemera folder for now I'm just I'm putting mine like this and then as they fill if there's if I think that there there's still enough space I can still add a few pockets later not a big deal just go in with some glue and add them as I need them but for now I'm content with this versus making you know if you don't want to make another folio and you just want to add to it just remember, uh, bulk, <laughs> you don't want it too, too thick either, because this doesn't have like a fabric closure or anything like that. You're actually going to use the um, flip out portions, the flip out pockets to keep your um, folio closed. All right, let's do this last one and then I'll pause to do the others. So then we can get the signature sewn in. Pretty simple stuff. I like these polka dots because they're not exactly perfectly circular polka dots. It's kind of like how my life is right now, <laughs> kind of upside down. And like everyone's life is, right? Everyone's life is kind of turned inside out and upside down. And for any of you that work in the medical field, um, grocery stores, um, hospitals, post office, banks, any of these places that are still remaining, restaurants, they're, you know, sucking it up and going out there and going to work to help keep things going. You are thought of and you are appreciated and special prayers are going out, at least in my home, for you guys. So, I know that a lot of you guys are taking a lot of flack from a lot of people not understanding why, why you don't have this and why you don't have that or why we can't do this and why we can't do that. How That is so stupid and that is so silly and that is so whatever. Trust me, guys, I know that I appreciate you guys doing it. If, if it's in place, for it's there for a reason, and I understand, and you are definitely appreciated from this end. So, And for all those family members that, you know, their loved ones have to go out and do those kind of things, Prayers are out for you guys as well, because I know that's got to be just as stressful. Um, and you guys are appreciated too. Because if you guys didn't do it, the grocery stores would shut down. You know, truck drivers too. Those truck drivers that are Getting all our supplies where they need to go. Appreciate you. The post office for keeping our mail going. For those of you who may have to stay in and order from home, order things online. So this will be one signature. So as you can see, all my uh, ephemera pages, the folders are, or the pockets are on the inside. You can certainly put pockets all the way around if you so choose. Or put, maybe put one big pocket on the outer portions, too. That's completely up to you. So I'm going to pause so I can finish this other signature real quick. And we can get the signature sewn in.
be right back. Okay, I am back and I've got all of the pages with the um, little pockets put in there, the little vellum pockets. So now what we want to do is we want to sew in our signatures. So I am going to use my book binding board that I got from Crafty Cat. Um, and what I'm going to do is just, I, they don't have to be perfect. Um, I'm not worried about them being all even here. They're a, a folio, you know what I mean? They're a folder for ephemera. It's not a journal. So I'm not too, too worried about it being um, perfectly here and here and whatever. So, but I do want to make sure my holes get put in there correctly. So I'm going to put my little template in there and then I poke right down straight down in there. And that's what's great about this book cradle is there's a little groove at the bottom. And then when I poke my holes, they all come out right on the fold, like right where they're supposed to go. So, all right, so I'm going to use some red butcher's twine and my big thick needle. One, two, link three times of the height. And since I've already marked, we've already marked in here, this is going to be my second signature. So I'm going to put in it in first. Um, and someone did ask me about um, where I get my fussy cut uh, flowers or where to go to get them. Um, there is an Etsy store called My Porch um, Prints. My Porch Prints. I'll leave a link um, in the description block below for it. Um, she's got flowers and birds and butterflies and Easter stuff and all kinds of things that you can fussy cut out. It's really cool, so go and check her out. All right, so I'm going to start in the middle, poke it all the way through. Make sure your step is out of the way so you don't knock it over like Denise does. <laughs> I'm going to leave myself a little tail. I am going to come up to the top. Poke it in through there. And then in through my holes here. There we go. And then down all the way to the bottom and through that hole of the spine pull it up back through the center just going to try and make sure I don't thread you know cross over my threads here so I'll keep a hold of that one a little bit and then I want to make sure that my needle comes on to the other side of where it's on this side, I'm going to go come up on the other side of that. Okay. So that I've got a piece of thread coming on either side of that center piece. Just pull it. Doesn't need to be guitar string tight, but you do want to make sure that it's, you don't have anything loose in the back. Because otherwise your signatures will start to come out if it's too loose. So half knot once, half knot twice, and do my little bow tie. You don't have to do a bow tie. You can cut it off at that point. I'm just going to leave it there for now. All right, so there's one in. Now we need to do the second. So... Same thing here, just make sure everything's kind of tucked. That I'm not worried about this being even, but I am worried about it making sure that it's, you know, even up, up top and bottom. Put it in my book crate, 
put my template in there, make sure my template's lined up. Poke my holes. string three times the length one two and three thread my needle make sure you use a big enough needle for your thread all right make sure I'm right side up here okay. starting in the center through my center here on my spine. Leave myself a small tail. Come up through the top. And then find my hole back through here. Down through the bottom hole and through the spine. Okay, and then back through the middle, trying not to twist my threads because otherwise that will prevent it from tightening properly. Making sure my needle comes out on the other side of the other thread. Do a pull. Doesn't have to be guitar, but I just want to make sure I don't have any anything loose or looped back there. Half knot once, half knot twice, make a bow. Loop, maybe. <laughs> make a bow. <laughs> I'll try this again. Alright, and then just cut my little ends here even. And there we go. Alright, so now we are essentially done. We can further decorate if we want, but the great thing about this is I've got an, an outer, my front flap has two pockets, so if I've got like ephemera that I still need to fussy cut and I haven't got to it yet, I can put it in here or I can put additional ephemera in there, but I can put my first signature and tuck it. Same thing with the back, and tuck it. And the great thing is that now keeps my binder closed. I don't need a closure for it. And as it gets fatter, that holds it in, okay? Now you can certainly put a piece of ribbon or sorry silk or whatever you want. You could put poke a little hole up here at the top and you know hang a little um, tag on there that says what's in it. Or you could put it here or across the top, whatever you want to do. Um, that's totally up to you. Let's see how much. we got 53 minutes right now. So I think we've got a little time to decorate. What I like to do and what I've done with these is I put a little washi right here. Just around the edge here. So let's find a pretty one here. That might go with that. Kind of like something a little a little sparkly just a little so what I'm gonna do is scissors I'm just gonna cut me a piece And then use some of my Scotch Create tape. I like this washi, but um, it is a little more tackier than some of the others. Um, I, I especially like the the um, material that they made it out of. It's almost like a glassine material. Oops, 
All right. little scissors. Okay. And then fold it. And wrinkles. I need a little wrinkle here. Gotta get it fixed. Okay. And then, as you can see, I need to put a little glue here. Tack it down. No. Right. Somehow I ended up being crooked. And that is the great thing about washi. <laughs> it. Let's see here. There we go. Much better. do this side same thing I do like this washi though Because it, it is, it's almost like a glassine style paper. And come on. This is a thicker washi, so I gotta go over it kind of twice. Because <laughs> it's thick, <laughs> it's sticky. kind of even here. Let's tack that over. Fold it. Ta-da! Pretty little, almost like a book edge there that's kind of fancy schmancy with some little gold leafing there. And that's that. Not bad for 59 minutes, just under an hour. So we got it done. Yay. Hopefully this video will take. Um, because I, I've already made that one over there and I have plans for it, I think... Um, I am going to add this to my 500 Sebi giveaway. It'll be added to it. Um, if you haven't checked out that video, you can go up here and click on the I, and it will take you to that video. Uh, make sure that you um, comment on that video, because that is the video I will use the random YouTube um, uh, comment picker to select the winner. So I'll have two winners now. Uh, one for the first um, ephemera folio that I did, and then this one. That one has ephemera in it. This one, because it is a little bit bigger and it's two signatures, I'm going to leave it naked like it is. You can decorate or fill it any way you want. Um, so I'll add this as a second prize, um, a second giveaway on my 500 um, sub giveaway. So uh, make sure you go back to that video and... Um, comment on there if you haven't already done so. So until next time, guys, please be safe. 
create on and plenty of hugs loves